but we have to understand that intentional or not based on the meaning of the word you are still appropriating that culture when you do those things what is good everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm amber and i am here with another video today i am excited to bring you all a new series called good talks basically i will just be talking about different topics that i think are important or relevant to discuss and have sort of an open dialogue about some things will be more on the serious side and other things will just be topics that are uh, relatable or current things like that but for today i will be talking about cultural appropriation now i want to be very clear that i am not an expert on this topic i am still learning and becoming more knowledgeable which is why i want to bring it to you all as sort of an open conversation um i will be explaining it in terms of my understanding and my perspective and then i welcome you all to share your um thoughts and ideas on this subject as well in the comments down below as always don't forget to like especially comment and share and subscribe if you are not already subscribed i have some popcorn with me for today if you would like to grab something just you know sit back listen talk engage pause go ahead and do that other than that let's get right into it so starting with the dictionary definition it is the unacknowledged or inappropriate adoption of the customs practices ideas etc of one people or society by members of another and typically more dominant people or society and I think it's important to note that this term was added to the dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary in 2017. This concept is not new, but the term is new, which is why I believe there's a lot of misconceptions and, and confusion around it. Um, but for the purpose of this video today, I will be talking in terms of hair specifically, but understand that obviously this can be applied to other cultures, other um, parts of culture, things like that in general. It's important to kind of give some background knowledge on the history of black hair. Why there's so much talk around um, this connection between people appropriating black hair. And so in African culture, hair has been, always been a, an important part of identity. So styles, specific styles, actually hold meaning and history in itself of their own. And that's that's a whole nother video. But in the 17th, 18th century, when European settlers um, arrived in Africa, they like took note of how they viewed the hairstyles that they saw and were amazed by the diversity and time put into these styles. But then when slavery and colonialism came about, those attitudes shifted and the view of African hair became more negative. For example, referring to African hair as wool in order to further dehumanize them. And so it went from hair being a beautiful part of the culture to being something that was used to make them feel inferior. Further attempts continue to be made to make Black people be viewed as less than. A popular example is the Tigan Laws. I'm not sure exactly how to say that word. The Tigan Laws, which were passed in 1786 in Louisiana. These laws require women of color to wear a hair a head scarf to keep um, from displaying excessive attention. And again, this is also a whole nother video in itself. But just to give a quick overview, during this time, the free black population was growing in Louisiana, 
which resulted in more interracial couples. And the way black women carried themselves, wore their hair, etc., became a threat to the social order and to white women because the men were attracted to the women of color in order to keep free black women inferior they put in place these laws black women turned and basically ran with this because they turned it more into a statement of expressing themselves through the hair wraps when the u.s took control of louisiana these laws were abandoned but women continued to wear them as a symbol of resistance and celebration rather than what their original purpose was what which was to diminish them um as people moving on after the slave trade was um abolished in 1865 the damage was still there and so they still felt inferior because of their hair and that's when you will see a rise in people looking for solutions um to conform to the U european beauty standards so the relaxer and things like that that promoted straightening our natural hair then we go to the 1960s the afro became popular and a part of people's identity the black youth were basically rebelling white conformity and during the civil rights movement in the 70s it be, really became a, a political symbol in itself so we're seeing people start to celebrate our hair in its natural state again um and which was a positive step but still just the common view of hair was that european textured hair was good our hair african hair was bad unprofessional and just received a lot of criticism fast forward to today the natural hair community does seem to be growing and becoming more appreciated but we still are seeing a lot of dim discrimination against natural hair or styles worn by black people so when i was doing my research on cultural appropriation i came across this analogy analogy and i think it's a really good like simple way to try to explain appropriation it compares appropriation to plagiarism so say you've been assigned to write a paper um about volcanoes um you're doing your research and you find a paper that fits exactly what you're looking for so you retype the same exact paper word for word and you might even still give credit to the original author of the paper. So you turn this paper in. Not only do you get a perfect grade on the paper, you get awards, praise, different scholarships, all of that for your work. While keeping in mind the original author is only ever addressed or acknowledged in your bibliography, if you even chose to do that. Now, in the real world, you if you turn something in like that, you wouldn't actually pass or get a good grade on the paper, no matter how much you made sure to or not to credit who it originated from. You still took that person's work. When that system that detects plagiarism notice you took that paper, you won't pass. Simple. In some instances, there is such thing as accidental plagiarism but intentional or not it's still going to be marked as plagiarism so now i'm going to apply this concept to some current instances or situations first in 2015 a hair website main addicts was showcasing how to style mini buns bantu knots as a cool and trendy hairstyle they were marketing it as a creative way to style your hair while still looking chic in 2018 in denver an employee at ross was told by her district manager that she needed to take out her bantu knots in order to meet dress code keep in mind there was nothing in the dress code that even mentioned hair 
Number two, in 2018, Kim Kardashian posted a picture wearing Fulani braids and was being named a trendsetter. In 2017, two sisters got detention because their braids violated the school policy. Number three, in 2016 or 17, um, Marc Jacobs had predominantly white models go down the runway wearing pastel colored dreadlocks. In 2020, a student in Texas, DeAndre Arnold, was suspended for refusing to cut his locks for graduation. Now, in all these situations, not only do these hairstyles at hand have a deep history and meaning, Black people have experienced discrimination, mistreatment, and being stereotyped because of them. While the non-Black people are renaming them and not giving them credit, basically erasing it from Black culture by doing so, being labeled as trendy, but then ghetto or unprofessional and inappropriate on the Black woman, and or profiting off of it as well, whether it's just through Instagram likes or actual monetary gain. A common misconception when it comes to cultural appropriation is if non-Black people shouldn't wear Black hairstyles, why is it okay for Black people to not be limited to just African styles and wear things like straight wigs? One. History shows that Black people have basically been required to conform to the standards of what's professional versus what is unkept and messy. Two, there has always been pressure put on Black women by society to straighten their hair and Black hair, both the styles and the texture itself has been under attack by legal systems for years. Three, last but not least, as a white person, you are not facing discrimination or losing opportunities because you have straight hair. And, and also, in the definition it states for appropriation, it says, by members of a more dominant people or society, Black people have been labeled and made out to be seen as inferior or less than. That is why you can't try to compare the two or make it make sense in terms of if one side is culturally appropriating, then the other side is too. When you look at both sides, they aren't the same to start when it comes to experience, background, etc. So you can't try to evenly or equally compare them in this sense either. It just, it doesn't work. So I do want to do like a quick comparison just to try to make it a little more clear. Thinking about cultural appropriation and then racism. In general, now, nowadays, some people, some people don't care, but in general, no one wants to be called a racist but you still might do or say racist things unintentionally but it's still racism not everyone is intentionally appropriating someone's culture but then when they get labeled as such you see that person or group become very offended because of the negative meaning behind the word and no one wants to be seen in a in a negative light, especially if it wasn't your goal to disrespect or discredit someone. But we have to understand that intentional or not, based on the meaning of the word, you are still appropriating that culture when you do those things. All right, you guys, that is all I have for this topic. I tried to like break it down as clearly and as short and sweet as I could. Um, but obviously this topic has so much more to it and it goes deeper than just the black community and natural hair. But I hope that this video still, still was able to clear up any confusion or simply made you more aware of the meaning behind the word. Again, I'm still learning so I would suggest if you are truly interested in this topic you continue to do some research on your own. Comment below your perspective or your take on it. Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Again, I want this to be an open conversation that allows all of us to 
grow and become more aware and conscious without the fear of feeling, you know, judged for not knowing or understanding because we are all just here to learn together. But other than that, as always, don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, and share. With that being said, peace, love, and beauty. Bye.